Welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Community Matters on a given Monday uh, with Rabbi Itchel Krasnjanski, and he is the rabbi of Chabad of Hawaii. Welcome to the show, Rabbi. So nice to see your smiling face. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. Pleasure to be here as always. So let's talk about piece of news because, uh, you know, news is always first. And that is I, I keep seeing in Haaretz and other uh, American newspapers um, news about the, uh, the Hasidic community in Israel and in Brooklyn. Uh, very concerned about uh, rules that um, make it hard for them to pray. Uh, they wear masks, but they don't like the rules uh, that require distancing. Can you can you talk about the controversy? What's happening? Where Chabad stands on this? Well, so let me just say, practically speaking, uh, in, in the in the in the calendar, the Jewish calendar, uh, yesterday concluded a series of holidays that began with, as we all know, from Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, which was in the beginning of September, a month ago. And there was a series of holidays, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, then Sukkot. And Jewish holidays are celebrated communally. Firstly, in the synagogue, uh, where, where by Jewish law, it is required to have a minimum of a quorum of 10 people, which we call a minion, in Hebrew, a minion. Uh, and, and the more, the better. So therefore you have synagogues all, all across the world, especially in Jewish communities, where you have, uh, you, know, you can have a thousand people, you know, attend the synagogue uh, services. And, you know, normally you attend synagogue at our daily prayers, but on the Sabbath, and especially the holidays, that's, that's the time when the community comes out and gathers together. So it just so happens to be that this time of the year, uh, with all the holidays, this is the height of people coming together. That's just the way it's been for 3,000 years. So uh, with the new reality, you know, this came up against this new reality. And there is, you know, a lot of adjustment to, to, to make. And I think that's where the difficulty is. Now, it doesn't help, and it probably complicates things, that it is perceived by many in the Jewish community that, uh, that the community has been singled out uh, by, uh, in New York, by the mayor and the governor uh, for this you know, for this uh, strict, strict uh, adherence to the guidelines, when they, when the mayor and the politicians, for example, we've just all witnessed the Black Lives Matters protests and rioting and and all that stuff, and there wasn't uh, any any reaction on the part of the, the mayor and the governor to condone it to, uh, you know, to protest against it, to stop it. On the contrary, they actually condoned it. So there's a lot of hypocrisy here, and that's how it's perceived by many in the, in the, in the religious community. And therefore, there is no respect for, for the authority when it comes to these things, especially when, um, when this whole thing about these wearing masks, where some groups say that this is the most important thing to protect oneself from the from this virus, and others, other professionals say that the masks actually don't don't protect and don't help. So you have all the, you have a mix of all the stuff going on. So that's basically it. Mm. That's basically it. But so the, uh, the, the religious Jewish community is not, there's no controversy about masks. That seems to be the, the settled medical scientific opinion. It's about the distancing. Am I right? The social distancing, I guess. I guess so. I mean, I guess so. Well, especially in the synagogue, it's very, it's very difficult to socially distance in that way. Even though that in many, many communities, religious Hasidic communities or just even Orthodox communities, most of the prayers are, be, are done outside, outdoors. Most people comply with, with whatever the regulations are. Um, but like I say, when this element comes in, this 
politics and and this uh, singular, you know, to, to, to singling out the Jewish community when, for example, the, 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 the governor said that the reason why he's cracking down on these zip codes is because proportionately the rate per hundred is higher in these communities than it is normally. Is that true? Think, so they, so they, they fact checked it and it's not true. Meaning there's other zip codes in New York that are Hispanic and in the black communities where actually it's higher. And these are, they're, they're taking the numbers from the, from the city and state, uh, you know, they're working with their numbers and it's high, it's higher. But yet there isn't that, you know, that coming down heavy on, uh, on the other communities. So this perceived as, um, see, yeah, it's, it, you know, some people say, and I don't know if this is paranoia or this has any shred of truth, is that by and large, the Hasidic community are conservative politically, Trump supporters, because Trump's a, a fantastic for the Jewish people in Israel, uh, for sure, in Israel. So, uh, you know, the Democratic establishment doesn't look too uh, favorably on, the, on such a large block that's not Democratic, that it's Republican and it's pro-Trump, as opposed to the Hispanic and the Black community where, you, by, by and large, these are Democratic uh, strongholds. Hmm. Well, that's a discussion that would take us uh, uh, many, many Elsewhere. shows here. And, and by the time we get into that discussion, it, it, may, it may be moot, uh, given the proximity of Election Day. Uh, suffice to say that um, the Jewish community, as I know it, is, is not necessarily pro-Trump. Uh, and so what you have is a, a, a division within the Jewish community on, on that yeah. issue. Um, right. Anyway, let's, uh, let's, let's go to uh, the holidays. Last time you and I spoke, we spoke about uh, Rosh Hashanah, the high holidays, and Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement that follows uh, Rosh Hashanah by, what, a week or so? And then we get into the fall holidays, and there are three of them. The title of the show is uh, studying the holiday of uh, what, Sukkot, Sukkos in the Ashkenazic pronunciation, um, and also Shmini Atzeres. Um, that's Shmini Atzeret in the, in the Sephardic and Shmini Atzeres in the Ashkenazic, and you and I were both Ashkenazic. So <clears throat> and then, of course, there's the, the holiday that follows right on the heels of Shemini Atzeres, which is Simchas Torah, which was in invented by the rabbis, I, as I recall. Anyway, can you talk about the juxtaposition of those three, uh, Sukkos, Shemini Atzeres, and Simchas Torah? Sure. So these three holidays, uh, while there are three separate holidays, as you just so uh, beautifully explained them, but really they're, they're sandwiched together and they're referred to in general as the holiday of Sukkot. Shemini Atzeres and Simchas Torah are the final days of Sukkot. And they are also the final days of, a ser of the series of holidays. And in a sense, they are the culmination uh, the apex of all of the holidays that came before. So Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur are, you know, are, are serious days, you know, days of, uh, of awe and uh, the high holy days and days of awe. That's how they refer to uh, Yom Kippur as a time for repentance and forgiveness and introspection. Rosh Hashanah is a day of judgment. So these are all, you know, uh, very, very heavy, heavy days. Sukkot, uh, and especially the final days of Sukkot, Shemini Atzeres and Simplest Torah, are very joyous and happy times. They are referred to in the Torah as the time for happiness, the time for rejoicing. So uh, it is... You know, it is a whole different mood than Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, but it's almost like the, the byproduct of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. What follows the introspection and the soul searching of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur 
manifests itself in the form of joy uh, on, on Shemini Atzeres and Sukkis. So they really form one whole, you know, one organic whole. And uh, as, you, as you mentioned, that Simchas Torah, in Hebrew, Simchas Torah means the rejoicing of the Torah. The Torah is the book of God, the Bible, which uh, in the Jewish uh, religion and in synagogues, we have a Torah scroll. Every Torah is a scroll written painstakingly by a scribe, letter by letter, special ink. And uh, every Saturday, every Shabbos, a portion of the Torah is read in such a way that at the, uh, every year we go through the entire cycle from the beginning, from Genesis, Horatius, until the very, very end of Deuteronomy. There are 52 portions in the Torah and the 52 weeks in the year. So um, in that way we go through every, every week another portion. When do we conclude reading of the Torah? On Simplest Torah, that's when we read the last portion of the Torah, a uh, portion that deals with Moses, the passing of Moses before the Jewish people enter into the land of Israel and the blessings that Moses bequeaths the Jewish people before he passes on. And then we immediately uh, follow it up with the beginning of the Torah, with the Genesis. In other words, we end it and we start it at the same, at the same time in the same service. To highlight the, the idea that the Torah, which is really God's wisdom, God's thinking, uh, is infinite and uh, one can never, never fully uh, master it. The human, the, the human finite mind cannot plummet the depths, the full depths of the Torah. And we constantly are learning, learning, and relearning it and relearning it. So, so what, is, what is the, I recall a term, the five books of Moses. Is, it, is, the five, is that the Torah or is that some variation on the theme? No, no, no. So basically, the Torah is the Hebrew generic word for, for actually what the Christians refer to as the Old Testament. The Old Testament consists of the five books of Moses that Moses wrote. Um, which are Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. These are the English names for the five books of Moses. Then when Moses passes away, begin the era of the prophets. First comes Joshua, and then the judges, and then the prophets, like the prophet like Samuel, and then the book of Kings, King David and King Solomon, and many of the other Judean kings. Then you have the latter prophets, like the prophet Isaiah, Jeremiah, uh, Amos. These are the prophets, and they comprise of 24 books, five, five of them being the five books of Moses. Then you have the, the, the judges and the prophets, and a total of 24, which for the Jewish people, this is what is called the Tanakh. Tanakh is an abbreviation for Torah. First letter is a tough Torah. Second letter is a nun, like an N sounding letter, which is Nevi'im, the prophets. Then Ksuvim, the Chof, which is Ksuvim, is the writings of like the Book of Psalms, Book of Esther. These are all part of the Old Testament. But what we read in the Torah every week is the, from the five books of Moses. So Simchas Torah is a day of great rejoicing because we have just finished one cycle and we immediately begin the other cycle. So we rejoice with the Torah and it's not a time, you know, the Torah is very, a very deep teaching, uh, but we don't, we don't make symposiums and, and, and talk about, you know, the, the deep insights of the Torah. Actually we keep the Torah closed in its cover and we dance with the Torah because our, connection for the jew the torah is not just a book of knowledge or a book of information or a book of history the torah is really our bridge is the it's that which bridges man and god earth and heaven 
And our connection to the Torah is not limited to how much we understand or how much we know. It's an intrinsic, it's a, it's a soul connection. And this is manifest and expressed in the great joy of Simchas Torah. Mm. You mentioned history, and then you also mentioned a number of, uh, of figures that, you know, are, are mm, throughout, uh, you know, the religious discussion in, uh, in, in the uh, Western world. Um, a, a lot of characters, you know, King David is an example. So my question for you, Rabbi, is these people who are mentioned in, in, the, in the five books and in the books thereafter, um, did they live? Are they real? For sure. The answer is every, every child who's been reared and educated in the Jewish way would answer the 100% yes. The Torah is, first and foremost, a factual book of, maybe for lack of a better term, history. It tells the story from the beginning, from the genesis of the world and how God created it until in the five books of Moses until the end of Moses' life. Uh, and in the books of the prophets, uh, it talks about the kings and the prophets. So yes, King David lived and King Solomon lived and all of the kings. Now, what we say is that there are layers and layers of, of, of meaning uh, within the Torah. And the deeper messages in the Torah are really like almost like encoded in the Torah. You need to be able to read between the lines and decipher it. And that's where the mystic, the mystical teachings come in and the Kabbalistic teachings. So they, they, they um, try to tease out from, from the story and the words of the Torah, the, the larger discussions about the deeper, uh, the deeper messages from the Torah, but it doesn't, it doesn't uh, overshadow the, 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 the factualness of the Torah. So if, so if you really want to understand uh, those messages, you have to understand, um, uh, what do I call it, uh, ancient Hebrew. Not the Hebrew that's spoken in Tel Aviv today, uh, but ancient Hebrew, the Hebrew of Correct. the Torah. And right. you have to understand how the various parts and recitations of the Torah relate to each other, the kind of environment that they, that they are all taken together. Um, right. And I suppose right. that's why uh, religious Jews will study the Torah all their lives, because it's not just the words that are there. It's right. the words that's in that's the that's context that the, right. entire, uh, the entire Torah provides, right? Right. Well, basically, uh, with just generally speaking, there are two parts to the Torah. One is referred to as the written Torah, and the other one is the oral tradition. So for example, the Talmud, which is the work of the rabbis, uh, primarily after the destruction of the temple when the Jews were, first temple when the Jews were exiled to Babylon. In Babylonia, the, 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 the rabbis over a period of a close to a thousand years, uh, taught and, and, and they taught and they, they learned and they taught uh, the whole framework of Jewish law and Jewish thought all, all teased out of the words of the Torah because there is a methodology uh, to understanding the Torah and the words of the Torah. So the oral tradition is um, after the five books of Moses were written, everything, not after, while they were, that was written, it was also passed on from generation to generation orally, um, that which Moses received from God on Mount Sinai. The, the, and this is what people refer to as the orthodox uh, approach. See, we believe that the Torah is from, the he Torah is from heaven, meaning, it's God's word. It's not, it's not the words of an inspired leader, even one who is like Moses, but it, Moses was like a stenographer. He wrote down what God told him. And therefore, for those people who believe that way, the Orthodox Jews, the Torah is, 
as binding today as it was the day it was given, because God is eternal. And while the world has changed culturally in, in so many ways, but uh, the, the skeleton of life hasn't changed. And God's words um, bind us today like they did then and also provide the meaning uh, for our lives as they did for the Jews living then. Now, there's an so, interesting comparison going on right now, today, tomorrow, and a few days uh, into the week, uh, you know, with uh, Amy, uh, Amy, uh, uh, was it Barrett? Um, yes. And she's, she's uh, you know, being offered for confirmation, and, and she's a, a, a traditionalist, I mean, a, a literal reader of the Constitution. So some people feel, and there's a big division on this, that the Constitution is and should be a living, breathing instrument, you know, that is capable of being reinterpreted in, 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 in modern times, uh, when, you know, in, in current times, whatever that is. Um, and I, when I hear way, you, which, by the way, start for interrupting, uh, Jay, which is a very lot. It's it sounds very logical, because the Constitution is a man-made document. So uh, the you know you look at the intent of the framers, and then you uh, apply it to the situation, the changed reality of today. The Torah. The issue with the Torah is that it's a godly. Not only godly inspired document, it's a it's ha it God handed it down to, to to Moses to give to the Jewish people. So therefore, it's different. Now, there's other streams within Judaism, as we know, the conservative and the reform, who 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 say just like the Constitution uh, needs to be uh, interpreted to the to, to to the realities of the day, in the same way, also the Torah has to be reinterpreted to the realities of the day. So that's a discussion for a, for a show or two. Yeah, so if I come to you uh, or somebody who is an expert in understanding the Torah, who has spent his life a religious person, and I say, look, I, I see this provision here and I'm not sure how it applies to me um, or to my life circumstances, uh, you know, there'll be a discussion about that. There'll be an answer yes. to that. We, we are going to look at the Torah, but we're going to look at the Torah in light of all the wisdom that we can find and interpret, interpret the current events. Um, exactly. In, so for, for example, um, you know, what, what, what real rabbis are busy primarily doing is answering questions, for example, with new technology, with new scientific uh, breakthroughs. There are constantly questions coming up uh, and the rabbis have to have to address these questions and these are questions that in the times of the Talmud you know these things didn't even exist but they have to be able to apply based on the uh, the principles of what the Torah teaches and find the application to uh, you know to to, to modern day uh, situations so in every walk of life in every sphere of life that's really where the creative uh, 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 learning and teaching is going on. Mm. You know, so this trilogy of holidays uh, that starts right after Yom Kippur uh, and then works its way to Simcha's Torah, which is, uh, um, the, is that happening now? I want to say that's happening right about now, isn't it? Within well, Simcha's Torah uh, was, was um, Saturday and Sunday, this okay. past Saturday and Sunday. So it was so where, last where, night. We're finished with the, the three in the trilogy, right. but um, and I remember, I was telling you before the show, I remember there was a, a Hasidic uh, a synagogue in my neighborhood back, back in Queens, um, which would m march around the neighborhood carrying the, the Torahs and singing. Right. And singing some and people dancing. who were Jewish understood that. Other people who were Italian or Irish, they didn't necessarily, we had a very diverse neighborhood. Uh, or Asian, for that matter. You know, we were close to the United Nations. We were close to uh, Flushing Meadow Park, which was a very, you know, a diverse neighborhood. Uh, it was a melting pot neighborhood. Anyway, so they would march around and nobody would know. I mean, I would know. I was in the march. Uh, but the point uh, is, uh, it was a very happy time. Yes. And it was indeed. a very fun time. It was, a, as you said, it was a great relief uh, from the serious time of, of the high holidays. But I would like to, before we were out of time here, I would Jay, like if, to I can just, if, I, if, if I can just interject one thought, 
that uh, in Judaism, um, happiness and joy is a very serious thing. It's a very serious uh, endeavor. So it's not a relief. It takes on a different form, but it's very serious and very important and very integral to the life of Judaism and to the life of a Jew. So it's, it's equally intense, but in a different form. I, I take your point, Rabbi. And I remember um, Chabad, uh, which lost uh, two of its Torahs to some mischief uh, maybe three years ago, was yeah. able to recover uh, maybe a year and a half ago or two years ago, was able to recover one of them or right. somebody, somebody contributed a Torah to you, which is no no small thing. And you were celebrating, Chabad was celebrating that on Atkinson, Atkinson Drive. Um, and it was really something to watch. The people carrying the Torahs, uh, singing and dancing, I don't, they were very energetic. And uh, it, was, it was an example of the Simchas Torah kind of experience, wasn't it? Yes. There's a story in the Book of Prophets about King David that when David brought the ark, uh, the covenant, the, the, the ark that held the, the covenant, the Ten Commandments, which was in an ark, and eventually made its way into the temple when the temple was built by King Solomon. And the Holy of the Holies within the temple contained the ark that had the, the tablets, the Ten Commandments. So when King David brought the ark to Jerusalem, it says that, King David led a procession of people, first went the ark, and King David was not only rejoicing, but he was dancing and whistling and, and, and making all these, you know, you know, all gestures of, uh, of joy that his wife, who was the daughter of the first Jewish king, King Saul, uh, saw her husband being carried away in such a way, and she rebuked him later. She said, "That's not befitting for a king to, you know, to, to act like, you know, like, you know, like, like." She called him like one of the simple simpletons, the way he was dancing and rejoicing. And David answered her that she's mistaken. This is this is all in God's glory. This is all, you know, it's not uh, expressing, you know, a personal uh, joy. This is a much deeper joy. So yeah, that's how Simchas Torah is celebrated. And Simchas Torah, uh, as, as you mentioned, is the final holiday of the series of holidays. So basically what launches the Jew into the new year is Simchas Torah. The joy of Simchas Torah is meant to be taken you know, from that day and have it fill your heart for the entire year. So every day and every week and every year, you know, is filled with that joy. So I hope we have more things to talk about the next time, Rabbi. What, what's, what's the next holiday? What's the next issue we want to cover? So first of all, um, I'll tell you something very interesting that, the, you know, there's no word in the Hebrew language for religion. There's no such word. In modern Hebrew, they have a word and they call it dati. So a religious person is called someone who is dati. But in biblical Hebrew, there's no word for religion. Why? Because the whole concept of religion is alien to Judaism. Judaism is really a way of life that touches every, every aspect of your life from the morning till, till at night, every day of the year, and every day of your life. So really holidays, holy days, are also not really a Jewish idea because in Judaism, every day is a holy day. Yes, the Sabbath and the holidays are more pronounced and they celebrate something specific, whether it's a miracle or an important event, but the whole idea of the holidays and the Sabbath is for them to imbue our everyday life, that we should feel that that joy and that holiness in whatever we do. Now that we're doing a radio show or a, 
think tech, you know, it's imbued with the with, with the with the inner uh, inner joy and an inner zeal. So uh, we can talk about. We don't have to wait till the next holiday to find something to talk about. But the next holiday, now that you ask, is Hanukkah. <laughs> that's that's in about two months. <laughs> well, we have to meet before then, and I'm yes. sure we'll find something interesting to talk about. Uh, there are yes. so many things happening, and and so many things to you know connect up from from the Torah, from Jewish learning, uh, and from your experience in Chabad. Thank you so much, Rabbi, for uh, coming around. Uh, we still so enjoy these discussions. It's a it's yes. a wonderful experience to be with you. Uh, Thank we'll you. Talk Same soon. here. Same here, Jay. Be well. Shalom. Thank you.